Alert, lightning detected 3.2 miles away. Be on the lookout for severe weather. Attention. High wind gusts detected. Alert. A severe thunderstorm is moving east toward our region at 15 miles per hour. Expect impacts within the hour. Hazards. 60 miles per hour wind gusts, dime-sized hail. Stay indoors, avoid flooded roads, and move to an interior room. So I think I picked the perfect day to film this video. We've got incoming storms. Lorelai's been going crazy all day, warning me about severe weather alerts and high wind gusts to be expected today. And most of that data is powered by this device right here. This is my Tempest Weatherflow weather station, and it provides me all the basics that you'd wanna know, like temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, but also has some really cool sensors like it's able to tell me the current wind speed, especially when gusts like this kick up. It's able to let me know the current precipitation type and intensity. It can also tell when lightning strikes happen and also how far those lightning strikes were. And all that data is available in Home Assistant as separate entities that can be used to trigger automations or just to provide a holistic view of the current weather conditions here. So in a situation like this where there's clearly weather happening all around, I don't really have to wonder because my home already knows what's going on and it delivers that information to me in a variety of places. I can see it on the tablet dashboards in my home, on my phone, and if there is a severe alert that comes through, like a high wind gust, all the lights in the house will blink red a couple of times and then audibly over the sound system in the house, Lorelei will summarize what's going on right now, including everything from the NWS alert to my local conditions happening here, and then also taking into consideration the current radar that she's observing. And then all that, like I said, gets wrapped up into a really concise response, so I know how to best prepare for the next few hours ahead. For example, I've got my Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition right here, just connected it to a, a battery pack to get it outside, and uh, I can do something like this, so. What's the current weather radar look like? There is an impressive looking line of rain and thunderstorms moving west toward our area. If you're not feeling rain yet, it should begin raining shortly. Also, there's a wind advisory from the NWS currently in place. Stay safe. So she was able to really take into consideration all the data that I just mentioned and with more emphasis on the radar because that's specifically what I asked for. So she downloaded the latest radar loop, analyzed it, and let me know exactly about the conditions that I should be expecting right now. So how does my home know when a storm is approaching and when and where to deliver those alerts? Well, let's take a look at some of the automations and scripts that make this happen. First, I'd like to go over some foundational requirements that you'll need in place before you can do some of the things that we saw today. The first thing, if it wasn't obvious, is Home Assistant. The second thing is having some kind of local weather data available. Now you can use cloud weather data, but it won't be as to the minute as something like a local weather station. In my case, I'm using the Tempest weather flow, but there are many weather stations that are compatible with Home Assistant that can deliver similar results. I can't say enough about this device in terms of accuracy, reliability, and the array of sensors, but it's also far from the cheapest option on the market. You'll also need the NWS alerts integration. If you'd like to trigger anything from the National Weather Service alerts, you'll need a text-to-speech engine so that you can have Home Assistant translating the alerts and summaries into speech that's then vocalized over a speaker system. If you want to do any of the radar analysis, you'll need an integration that is able to analyze image data. In my case, I am using the LLM Vision integration, and you'll need some type of radar source. And there are a lot of great public resources for high resolution weather GIFs, like this link right here, which updates this GIF file every five minutes or so with the latest radar imagery. And if you want some of the LLM driven automations, you'll need to be able to expose your script to your voice assistant and have all that set up already. I'm not gonna go over that in this video, but I have some others and some links in the description that can get you going in those departments. 
Now that you have the foundational stuff in place, let's take a look at some of these automations and scripts. First, let's take a look at the lightning alerts automation. So the first thing that happens is that a lightning alert is triggered inside the weather flow. Next, the automation checks to make sure it is an appropriate time of day to send an announcement across the home. I don't want these announcements firing off in the middle of the night waking us up. If it is between 6 a.m. and 10.30 p.m., then we move on to the next condition. We're verifying that the lightning count sensor is greater than zero. If it is yes, then we move on. If the last time this was triggered was greater than 30 minutes, it then continues. Was the lightning strike within 10 miles? Yes. Is the lightning sensor on? I keep double checking to make sure that this is actually what's happening. Some of these are probably redundant and not necessary. And if all these are satisfied, then it will create a scene snapshot of all the lights in my house, and then it'll flash the lights. After it flashes, it goes back to the previous brightness and state whatever the light bulbs were at. And here's a quick look at the home assistant automation flow. If we take a look now at the wind gust alert, this one's pretty simple. Again, starts with the weather flow with a high wind warning, gusts above 12 miles per hour, Again, checks time conditions, make sure that it's a reasonable time to be sending this alert. Has this happened within the last two hours? Like the lightning automation, I don't want this triggering too often. And then as long as it was longer than two hours ago since the last one, it sends out the notifications to my home. And here's what the home assistant automation looks like. And I will have all of these automations linked in the description below in GitHub gists. And finally, we have the most complex automation of the lot. We have the severe National Weather Service alert automation that's not triggered by the weather flow, instead is triggered by the NWS alerts automation. And when that state changes, in other words, when there is an alert present or an alert added, it will trigger this flow, first of which is to download the latest radar images, then analyze those images, and then store that radar analysis for usage later. Next, it triggers the Lorelei GPT weather script which basically invokes the LLM to summarize everything. It then stores the summary in a text helper, which is visible on different dashboards. And then it checks to see whether or not it was a severe alert. When NWS alerts come through, they apply a severity, either moderate, severe, or minor. And I only want severe alerts to trigger the more dramatic resolution here, where if it is severe, it will flash the lights red, and then send out the notification on my speakers in my home. Let's take a look at this automation and script more closely. As I said, it starts with the NWS alert really changing any state, so going up or even decreasing. Sometimes there are multiple alerts present and when updates are issued, I still want to know what's happening and receive that update. Next, it downloads our radar loops. And if I pull one of these up, you'll be able to see what it looks like. And again, I've done a little bit of research to find these GIFs. They are out there. You just have to know where to find them. I will put this one in the description just in case this one is useful to anyone out there. After those two files are refreshed, they're sent to the LLM Vision integration. I've gone over this in some other videos. I'll drop some links in the description below. And then the analysis from the previous steps are rolled up into a bigger prompt for my LLM, which will then push it all over to this script where we have the message field, which was sent from this variable right here. It's stored now in the field, so I can call it later. Then we invoke the conversation process. And I have this trying to force limiting this to 255 characters because that's the maximum that you can put inside of a text helper. And then it sets the text for that text helper. And now we determine whether or not it satisfies the conditions to announce it in the home and turn everything red for a couple seconds. So we want to make sure that the time is reasonable between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., that it is indeed a severe alert. And if all that's true, we first take a snapshot of the states of all the lights. Then we turn all of them red for a couple of seconds and then go back to the previous state. Immediately after that, we send the voice notification to the speakers in the home, and then also I send the alert to my phone as well. Having reliable, real-time weather data locally available has been an invaluable addition to my smart home setup. Not just to keep me aware of severe weather, 
but I'm using it to help water my lawn more efficiently, to let me know when to bring the plants inside as the seasons change, and I feel like I'm only scratching the surface in all the ways I could be incorporating this live weather data in the different systems in my home. I even have an LED installation on the wall in my office that is getting fed real-time data and visualizing that for me. That's all powered by WLED. I made a video about that. You should see the card somewhere here. And this is just the first video in what's going to be an entire series on weather and how that relates to home automation. So make sure to get subscribed and I'd love a like on this video if you enjoyed this one. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.